Hey guys, in this video we're going to be taking a look at Quantum Conundrum. Uh, this game might be of quite of interest to quite a few players. It was actually designed by Kim Swift, who was partly responsible for the design of, of course, Portal, which I'm pretty sure a few of you guys know. It's actually one of the few games that was really big on PC that I never actually played, even though I own it on Steam. Um, I actually got it free because of back in the day I bought the orange box for Half-Life 2. Anyway, that's a whole story. <clears throat> it's currently available, I mean Quantum Conundrum, not Portal of course, on Steam for about £10. I think it's 9 99 So anyway, let's have a little look at this. Um, first things first, we'll have a look at the controls. <coughs> okay. Fair enough. And we also have audio settings. Everything's maxed. Video settings. There is a slight little hiccup on my setup. I don't know if it's mine specifically. <clears throat> it could be the way I've mapped the pixel aspect on my screen. In other words, um, the size, the size scaling, shall I say? But um, basically, if I reduce the resolution, the size of the screen adjusts accordingly. So in other words, it no longer full screens. So this is one of those videos I have to record in 1080p for. Not a big deal, but it's just worth noting. Um, there's also a slight lack, to put it up mildly, of graphical options. So for those of you who have got like, poorer rigs or really like to tweak, well, there you go. Um, there's also a tutorial of sorts, but I don't think I'm going to need that. I hope I'm not going to need that. <laughs> um, I'm going to skip it anyway. I'm going to start a new game. Uh, there's no point in going to level select. Obviously, I've got nothing unlocked. So, <clears throat> new game, loading dimensions. Once upon a uh, time. Here we go. That's how these things usually start, yes? Correct. A sister took pity on her brilliant, prolific, and incredible brother. She had somehow gotten it in her head that he might be lonely, or at least that's what she claims. And so on Is a that the same fine, guy who plays Q from the Star Trek? His name alludes to Elwood Academy for Boys and drop the aggravating child off on my uh, the, the brother's doorstep. He sounds now, you, really I mean, similar. Boy, if not. had visited Quadrangle Manor on a few occasions. Each time was complete with a grand entrance from the brother, who was in fact a professor and inventor with a profound and soaring intellect. With each visit, the inventions he exhibited became more slick and cutting edge. The boy eagerly awaited the revealing Gosh, of the name? professor's really latest annoying. contrivance, really but this, this the most captivating of visits, started a bit differently. I'm almost positive it is. Anywho. Well, let's see here. If I configure the trans-dimensional velocity oh. regulator at approximately 0 0.887 microseconds, Oh, you're here? I have the most incredible invention to show you this visit. Unfortunately, I'm a bit <laughs> indisposed at the moment. Move around whilst... Can we jump? Okay, we can jump. If you take your luggage into the foyer, I will join you as soon as I can. Oh, the left mouth button, okay. Okay, simple. Ugh. Oh, you confounded machine. Ugh. What was that? That's a good question, by now, Sam. Let's have a quick look at the design overall. I'm assuming that is the professor and not myself. Um, it looks very good. I believe I'm playing as a 12 year old boy, which would indicate the height discrepancy. Kind of reminds me of Amnesia, actually, the fact that you can throw around objects. Kind of cool. See if you can. Oh, you can destroy things. Excellent. Oh, good. That should be a safety release for the door up there somewhere. Now, where on earth did I put that? Imagine. Wait a minute. Something isn't quite. Fairly clear. simple one. Oh no, 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 no! Yes, 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 ah! yes! Yes! Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. There's a 
one of those times you don't want to move for a second because you don't want to get pounded by furniture and then die. I will say, I really like the, I really like the graphical styling. It's just bright, colourful, um, and it's. The security uplink on my watch still seems to work, so I can see you and. Hello, you you, you can hear me, right? Jump around a bit if you can. Ah, it seems as if I can still tap into the intercom system. Well, I most certainly can do better than this. Testing, 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 testing. There. Ah, much better. Uh. Now, what in the world are you doing here? Were you supposed to be here today? No matter. Well, judging from the current underwhelming amount of light in this room, we're still on Control backup power. Control is also My head is killing me. It seems as though I now possess a rather large epidural hematoma. A bump on the head. Do me and yourself a favor and head to the front hall. There's a way to restart the power grid. Ah, uh, I was about to say, the question is how do you open the door? Last I remember, I was in the new technology sector, and then... I don't know. I do think the failsafe was tripped accidentally. Unfortunately, the front door will remain in lockdown until you can restore the power. Awesome sources. Take that. That does not look... Am I the only one that thinks that does not bode well? Is this going to zap me with energy? No. It's something about going between two electric. If you head over to my office over on the left, you should be able to restart the manor's power grid. Over on the left, that would not be that. That would be this one then. Throw that switch there. It should be the one. Excellent. Well, that wasn't as effective as I'd hoped. You'll have to reactivate the generators in each sector in order to lift the current lockdown. Just uh, take the glove in the box with you. Now, I wish you could see my facial expression right now. Okay. As I am not pleased. <laughs> what you are holding is an early prototype of the interdimensional ship device. Or IDS. Or IDS device for short. It's one piece of my latest invention that should come in handy. Get it? You know, because it's a glove. <laughs> Hmm. Uh, any instructions on what to actually do with that, or do I just, you know, think it looks awesome? Okay. So, I've got one, Q, three, and E all highlighted. It doesn't seem like I can do anything else. It's also a painting of that glove, and a bucket load of books. If you can access oh, the generator at the back of each wing, we might be able to lift the lockdown on the rest of the house. Okay. It seems as if the breaker did unlock the blue wing. Well, I suppose you should start there first. Indeed, but let's first of all have a quick look up the stairs. It doesn't look like I can get anywhere here. So this looks like the hub, at least, of this particular area. Um, kind of reminds me, actually, of the Mario start, um, and of course, Super Mario 64, in terms of a general hub at the start. Okay, so that opens. Fantastic, oh so. There's something I must tell you. My latest invention has required me to make a few uh, adjustments to the house since the last time you barged in. I, I mean, visited. Okay, let's have a look. We have gone through this, and now we are here. That is probably not good. It's a pretty cool jetpack, however. I wouldn't mind being like a ninja lamp. Oh, uh, yeah, there's certainly a lot of stuff. It's like a freeze ray or some description. That would be pretty cool. Oh, I didn't actually mean there's a pond, sorry. Anyway, let's go the up. The glove here. controls the power source, which allows you to travel to whichever dimension has rifts in the area. Okay. Sounds very portal like. I'm assuming it's telling me to go up here, or it's just generally pointing in the right direction either way. You won't have control over the ability to switch dimensions yet. Just be patient. Okay, indeed. Let's see. This door is using one of my inventions, the repetitive, periodic, articulating Gruy Day. Or 
a drinking bird. Except that it's far more advanced. But I don't know why you'd put that on your door. Why would you do that? That would really make you rage. Well, because your glove is an early prototype, it has a few limitations in terms of dimension accessibility and the okay. distance it can be from a receptacle in order to function. Indeed. I assume we have to throw the switch. I can't help but feel these doors are a little bit overkill. Quite like the episode kind of title. Here we go. This is such an early experiment with dimensional shifting, so I decided to have it triggered remotely with the drinking bird. Instead of operating a door, the bird will trigger a dimensional shift. There's an IDS battery in the machine that will power the dimensions, which in this case is Fluffy Dimension. In addition to Fluffy being embarrassingly adorable, it's also rather useful because everything is ten times lighter than normal. Okay. That's simple enough. Though that looks like a regular scale, it is in fact a portable kinetic mass to electricity converter. Oops. There was the one the poor ways to actually put that on. But still, it was, you know, fine. It is on and I am happy. I must say I quite like the overall layout. The only slight bug I have with layouts like this is their design, such as these tables and so on. It looks a little bit repetitive, but that's just one of those things. There's that lovely bird again. Sometimes I call him Desmond. Okay, that was simple. Something to note. Since you're holding a version of the IDS device, you, in fact, are not you in an alternate dimension. But, uh, let me try that again. You remain constant, so no matter the dimension, your mass, shape, speed, and time personality remain the same. Okay. Uh, can I jump like that? Ah. Apparently, I'm not sure if you can make that regularly. You can. So, fair enough, I just want to see if the jumping point You should throw it. that IDS battery into the receptacle mounted on the wall. I see. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the IDS receptacle is. Also, I'm not quite sure what you throw. Ah, the receptacle is up on the second floor alcove. doesn't really help. He's not that much of a ninja. That receptacle will distribute the power source around the room, switch allowing you to now use dimension. your IDS device to switch dimensions at your leisure. Oh, cool. Eh, he wasn't kidding. I'm assuming it's not that simple. No, we're gonna need two of them, so... Uh, so add the second one, and it in turn opens the door. E easy, easy, easy. As I mentioned, dimensional rifts in the manor are magnified by the stabilizing energy from the IDS receptacle and batteries. Whee! This is what enables you to slip between dimensions when you're wearing the IDS glove. Okay, let's pull that down real quick. Fucking stuff. Ah, that's Dolly. Dynamic Object Linear Ligation Interface. To you, a cloning device. I like my house just so. So I decided to add functionality to her to keep everything consistent. Oh, I'll need to tune that later. I see. Uh, okay, let's throw that in there. So we can lighten things. Which, I don't know if that's 
worth it on the save, but let's have a look. Somewhat curious. I'm sorry, this is just completely not big mindless, but does this break if I do that? No. Does it break if I was to do it? Huh! So the mass of an object changes as it's if I switch modes. So in other words, it's not inherited and kept. That's kind of cool. That's pretty. That's pretty cool. I like that. Also means you can basically pick up anything, including the sofa. Huh. You probably don't These are my own particular hybrid beams of carbon dioxide and neodymium dope yttrium aluminum garnet lasers using an alternating ray configuration. Gives them an extra kick. Indeed. I can't help but feel if I were to do that, it would not bode well for me. There we go. Pretty simple. Unfortunately, the breaking of this glass is a necessary evil. Don't take that as permission to do it elsewhere. Dude, seriously. Oh, huh. Now, how the bloody hell are we supposed to get across that? Uh, let's just make sure I'm not chimping it. It's an easy way. Ah. There is actually a door down there. Let's have a quick look. I don't really see how it's going to benefit me. curious on. There is a subtle delay there. Nice. Ooh. Yeah, that's probably not standard. Feasible. Ah, just letting you know that you reset the glass. Thank you. Ah, I see. Oh, simple. Easy. Ah, that wasn't so bad. Fairly logical puzzles thus far, which always does please me. I think the table should do. Let's have a little look. Yup. Oh, that uh, creature there is an interdimensional kinetic entity, or Ike. I see. Hmm. 
Hmm. Curiouser and curiouser, as I say. Interesting. Can we throw it over? We can indeed. Oh, it's just for a second there, the call is forever, and it's like, no. There we go. I'm pretty happy so far. Seems to be doing relatively well. Stop for a minute and take a look at the painting. The machine I referred to as Dolly started out as a simple metal forge that had been in the family since medieval times. The original quadrangle suit of armor was actually constructed in this very forge. I don't know how quadrangle suit of armor would be, but fair enough. If it makes you happy. My great grandfather modified the old forge so that if it had enough raw resources, it could craft steel objects autonomously. Huh. This predecessor to Dolly supplied all the materials needed to build the Underground Railroad. I see. Uh, I'm assuming I have to just click on that one. Yep. Air raising scheme. Let's see how long I've been recording for. It's 25 minutes. I think I'll record for a little bit longer. Okay. Now. Let's click on this. See what In case you're wondering, you turned on the fan. Please say that you don't need me to explain that to you. Okay. What happens if I remove this? Very little. Oh, can I get through this door? No. What about if I just take that one out? That one. Okay. So they all do the same thing. I can't disable the fan. What about if I was to grab this out? What about I, I smash up a bit? Nope. Not heavy enough. Okay. I need three objects. How the hell am I supposed to do that? I suppose I'm going to go back through this door in there. Oh, I see. Easy. Not so bad. It does concern me somewhat. Standard issue conveyor belts. Sometimes laziness should be indulged. Well, no, I don't have a week. Speed that along. Oop, that was not the best throw I've ever done in my life. Stop pulling me, that's irritating. Ooh, <laughs> I'm glad you didn't see that laser. That would have been extremely unpleasant. There also appears to be another safe here. Let's go back up here. Do 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 do. Can, I'm assuming I cannot jump into that. Oh, I can. And I have so many damn safes in here, it's actually ridiculous. In fact, I could probably get crushed. Ah, that's where that got to. That is a botched experiment of mine called the Awkward Noise Generator. 
There's got to be more around here somewhere. Hmm. Indeed. Alright, I'm assuming... Alright, let's have a look. Oh, hold on, hold on, that looks very unpleasant. Yes, that looks entirely unpleasant. It does not look pleasant whatsoever, my friends. Yes, there we go. Excellent. So, I haven't discussed my location a whole lot, but it seems as if I'm in some sort of limbo. I think I may explore a bit and see what turns up. Um, I'm not sure if that's wise. I'm certainly playing the role as a regular silent protagonist. Okay, so I have a cloudy thing, the feather dimension, I believe it's called. So we can quickly. Has anyone ever told you your that? presence can be rather soul crushing? <laughs> I like that. Now, press that. But I started that, and apparently that also makes things drop rather fast. Hello. So, I'm guessing... Awesome. The only problem is now I need to deal with that. So, I'm guessing the best way to do this would be... Up there, and then up so I go. Oops, CDZ. I don't know where the hell the thing just went. If it would throw another one down, that would be fantastic. I'm really hoping it throws another one down. Oh, there we go. It's right there. Awesome. I'm about to say. Oh dear, that's not good. Oh dear, me. Switch it again. Awesome. Simple. That uh, opens that, which opens that, which in turn opens this. Awesome. Simple stuff. Puzzles so far seem simple ish. Checkpoint, there's a button there, so let's press that real quick. Oh, I see, so that just is our safe. as I throw one out. Okay. I think that's timing. I have a feeling you have to smash that. At pure guess. He says. Unless you have to lift these up to create a raft to go over there. I'm not sure which one. Wasn't quite originally what I thought was going to happen, but okay. What does this do? Boop, 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 boop. That is a lot of safes. This guy has a safe fetish. I'm pretty sure. I haven't really mentioned performance yet. Uh, it doesn't really require that much of a system drain, to be honest. Um, running perfectly fine on F where the hell do I go here? Oh, I see. Oh, 
I see, so it just literally keeps them in place. Awesome. So, in theory, I should be able to go burp, burp, burp. And just about make it up to this one to go burp, and then I can press this button. I'm not quite sure what that button does, however. This room fun. often gets rather sweltering in the summertime. Air circulation is very important. Huh. I wonder if... I would take one of these and put that there. I wonder if I'm supposed to just... Wow. Ooh, I actually had a really bad feeling about that one. So, as I was mentioning, performance is fine. I imagine if you've got even a mid-range system, or probably even lower spec system, you'll have to play it quite happily. Um, it's probably a bit of physics going on here, but I don't really think it's going to be that big. Of it. What the hell is that doing? It's a big-ass fan. I think we can guess what's going to happen here. Awesome. This one shouldn't be too bad, although I've got the distinct feeling I do not want to slip. You know what part that reminds me of? Whenever I do it, that still completely baffles me. Yes, that's a very good point. Um, it always reminds me of the bridge section in Half-Life 2. I'm assuming you guys have played Half-Life 2, but it really reminds me of whenever I'm doing jumping puzzles in a first-person shooter, it really reminds me of that, because it's one of those things where you make one slight little error, and it's not going to go too well for you. Huh, that was a bit... Pretty cool, you can actually somewhat. Oh dear! You have died. Huh. Oh, well, at least it puts you back on the same puzzle, so that's pretty cool. I have a feeling that's a bit high find out in about 10 seconds. <laughs> and I made it this time. Awesome. At least it doesn't punish you when you die. I would say that that was a deliberate thing on my part, because I just wanted to see the death system, but I'd be lying. So, you know, I was trying to be all awesome and be like, yeah, I don't die for this video, but no. I'm actually doing better than I anticipated. Um, the puzzles don't seem that bad, actually. I played a little bit of Portal, and I do mean, like, maybe... Like maybe 20 minutes or so. Um, I think it was actually a portal two, and the puzzle seemed a bit more difficult. Ah, uh, you moved on to a part of the manor where another type of dimensional rift is accessible. Ah. This is the Gravid Wolfram dimension, or Heavy for short. This dimension is in direct opposition to the Fluffy dimension and will make things ten times heavier. Okay. So, basically, it's not even worth my while trying to pick up anything while it's doing that. Oh, yeah. I'm assuming I do not activate it. Wow, there was an old mess of these things. Jesus. So, anyway guys, I think this is a relatively good look at the game by now. I think you've got a fair understanding of whether you're going to enjoy it. Players of, uh, let's say, I don't know, Portal will definitely like it. Uh, puzzle fans will definitely like it. And those who are just looking for something a little bit different. Um, goodness knows there's a lot of really cool games at the moment that are out. Um, I don't really think you can say that there's a shortage at the moment, particularly uh, of puzzles. There's quite a lot of point and clicks, for example. 
but I'd definitely rate this. I mean, it's ten pounds. I don't know what that is in dollars. If someone wants to leave a comment, what that is in US dollars, that would be you know good. Uh, but other than that, to be honest, I would recommend buying it if you're even slightly into this thing. I don't know how long it is. Obviously, I've been playing uh, for about half an hour, maybe a little bit longer now. Um, not including the intro and so on that I did, explaining the options, so probably about 30 minutes. And I've only literally just got to the part where I've access to the second ability. I haven't even got the actual, you know, ability on the glove yet. And I imagine later on in the game I'll have to combine all four, I'm assuming, abilities together to get past puzzles. Puzzles at the moment are fairly simple. Um, I'm, I don't know. Let's say I'm 15% into the game or 10% into the game. Puzzles are fairly simple. That's a pure guess, by the way. Uh, let's say I'm 10% through the game. Puzzles are fairly simple. But, uh, to be honest with you, I expect that. It's just kind of letting you know how the physics of the game work. Later on, it'll probably become a lot more difficult. Um, so, definitely one of those games where I'd recommend checking it out. Anyway, I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, if you would be so kind as to like and subscribe to our channel, then I would highly appreciate that. So, take care of yourselves, my friends, and bye for now.